Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Ian Laspina, and today we're going to talk about the difference between the armet and the close helmet. So even though they took two different evolutionary paths to ultimately get to where they did, no two helmets get confused for each other more than the armet and the close helmet. Now before we look into the difference, I think it's important to, to make the point that the term uh, armet versus close helmet, especially the term close helmet, is more of a modern term of convenience for students of armor so that we can more precisely convey the specific type of helmet that we're talking about. Because when we look into uh, the actual users of these helmet in period, uh, one of the terms that frequently pops up for what we refer to as a close helmet today is simply armet. So, um, in period, they didn't seem to care nearly as much as we do uh, about drawing a distinction between the two helmets, but as modern students, it's often very convenient to make a distinction so that we can more precisely convey what we're talking about. So when we start to look at historical examples of 16th century armets and 16th century close helmets, you can see why they're so easily confused for each other. Outwardly, stylistically, they're very similar helmets. They're both very closely fitted over the cranium. They both share a lot of stylistic cues from the other. In fact, um, you, you can find almost identical styles of visors and decoration and and uh, ridges and things on one helmet to the other family of helmets. Um, they both come in very closely underneath the chin. Um, so it makes sense that, that you know, they're easily confused. But when you look at them, you can see that uh, because of the nature of their close fit, in order to physically get into the helmet, there needs to be some sort of mechanical way that the helmet has to open to permit your head to simply get inside the helmet. And that's where we draw the difference between the armet and the close helmet. So if we look at the, um, if we look at these drawings here, I've got an armet on the left and a close helmet on the right. And um, you'll see why I've oriented them the way that I have in a minute here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the visor from the armet. And you can see that in this particular case, the um, visor was secured with um, hinged, with pinned hinges, like you see on a bassinet visor, for example. But this isn't even consistent from one armet to another. There are many examples of armets that have fixed visors that don't have a, a hinge to pull. So don't worry about that. What you'll notice, though, is that the on the armet, the protection for the face comes in the form of a Cheek, uh, cheek plates, one on the left and one on the right, and they're split down the center. And the way that this helmet opens is that those cheek plates are attached to the skull of the helmet by hinges, and they hinge outward to allow you to get your head inside. And even this isn't necessarily consistent from armet to armet. Some hinge upward, but in, later in the 16th century, there was a distinct German style of armet where the hinges were on the back of the cheek plates and they hinged uh, toward the rear of the helmet instead of upward toward the top of the helmet. Now let's contrast this with the closed helmet. So here on the right, we've got the closed helmet. I'm gonna go ahead and raise the visor. And what you're gonna see is that instead of two individual cheek plates, and it's a little hard in the orientation I've drawn here, uh, you have one single bever plate that fulfills the same function as the cheek plates on the armet. Instead of hinging open, the bever plate shares a pivot with the visor and can simply rotate forward on that pivot to permit your head to get inside. Um, another feature that you'll see commonly on, on closed helmets, again, this isn't consistent, not all closed helmets do this, but sometimes the visor is actually split into two components as well. So you actually have a visor, a short visor, and then a separately moving ventail. So you have a visor, a ventail, and the bever plate all sharing um, the same pivot. So in summary, it's simply the opening method that differentiates between the two helmets regardless of the other stylistic variation. Hinged cheek plates for the armet versus a bever plate that shares a pivot with the visor system on the closed helmet. So guys, I hope that this was informative. I hope that you now understand the difference. And again, remember, this isn't necessarily uh, period terminology for these two things. In fact, a lot of modern museums simply refer to both of these helmets as armets to this day. Um, 
So don't get too wrapped around the terminology, but understand when you hear those two differentiated, this is what people are talking about. So uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Um, if you know people that would enjoy the video, share it with them. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate all the help that you guys uh, bring to the channel and all the support that you guys give to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.